An American to go to Vietnam, it's pretty tricky because my country has a little bit of history with Vietnam that I have nothing to do with, but I'm very aware of. And so I go to Ho Chi Minh City, Saigon, and every three feet there is a portrait of Ho Chi Minh and a communist flag. Everyone I met was backbreakingly friendly. It was ridiculous how nice they were to me. Welcome to Ho Chi Minh City, poor loser, and they love to remind you that you didn't kill us, we're still here. You went home, we're still here. Oh, 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 oh. Have some communist food. And I like that. I'm like, wow, look at these people who can't be broken. So I hired a tour guide. I said, take me around, tell me something I don't know, and make me learn a thing or two. And he, he said, okay, are you ready for some anti-American sentiment? And it was like the guy who used to bring James Brown onto the stage. Are you ready for the eighth wonder of the world? Are you ready for some super dynamite anti-American sentiment? I said, yeah, I'm ready for some anti-American sentiment. He goes, well, I have some clients, they see the reality of the thing and they can't handle it. I said, I can handle it. And so he took me to a place called Ku Chi, which is a place one can go, pay some money, and crawl through some of the tunnels of the Ho Chi Minh Trail. And they had to widen the tunnels for Western visitors because we never miss a meal. And so I'm crawling through, and the guy's crawling ahead of me, shining a light behind me. Otherwise, I'm in complete darkness. And they have like bug out steps, like every 20 feet you can get out and come back to the ground. And you go segment by segment. So you do one, and people go, okay, I've crawled through the tunnels at Ku Chi, I'm done. And I'd say to the guy, let's do another segment. He's like, okay, and we would go in some of these segments, like you can barely fit through. And there was these moments where I'm like, I, I can't, I, I'm not gonna be able to do this. And I got pretty, you're like, wow, it's dark, it's really hot, there's no really breathable air, I'm freaking out. No, keep going forward. And finally you get out of it and get to the end and now like we're both kind of, <laughs> I go, let's do another one. I think I did like four segments. The guy's looking at me like, what a pain in the ass you are. <laughs> And so funny, the last part of this little tour, they had several tents where they had this propaganda film from 1968 or 1969 in different languages. So the French people go into the French tent and everyone else goes into the German tent or the you know, English tent. And I watched this propaganda film from back in the day in English. And it's this black and white footage of Vietnamese people in their villages with this kind of you know, drumming you know, parade music in the background, like on the victory kind of music with someone doing this like hilarious voiceover as they show uh, a, a, a young girl waving at the camera. This is Little Tron. Little Tron has killed more Americans than all of her friends. She's the envy of the entire village. Her parents love her because she loves to kill Americans. Maybe she'll take her baby sister and teach her how to kill Americans. They go to another village. This is Little Boy. What's his name? I forget. He's killed four Americans. Yay! And you see that these people were just not going to be broken. You're going to have to kill all of them, otherwise they're going to keep coming. And people with that kind of will to live, you cannot not admire it. And I'm going, wow, this is really stunning. And the guy sat down my tour guide said, you're not mad? I'm like, no, I'm not mad. I'm, I'm awed. I'm sad that so many people die, so many Americans, so many Vietnamese and whoever else, Cambodians and Laotians and all of this. But... Damn, this is inspiring. You people are just uh, not taking no for an answer. He said, nope, let's go to the war museum where you go room after room of babies in, in jars, you know, the, the product of, of, of tons of dioxin being dropped from miles over the ground. Like we basically bombed farmers into the Stone Age. And you go into one room, it's nothing but posters from other countries in solidarity with Vietnam. And you realize me and American realized for the first time, countries all over the world were looking at our invasion and occupation of, of Vietnam and, and just said, what a bunch of bullshit. And the artwork of these posters, like, you know, solidarity with Ho Chi Minh. You realize a lot of the world has looked at America and went, you motherfuckers. You know, I don't remember as a little boy ever seeing anything like that with Walter Cronkite on the news. And this is why I travel to hear a different opinion and to get a different grip on things so I can crawl into raining, snowing Dublin and look at you and try and say something to you that you may have never heard before. That is, is my great hope. And now I'm almost done with you. You will soon be standing up, blood rushing back into your ass cheeks. I think all of you are young, viable, switched on, and moving forward. I would like to beg you to do this with me. I want you to adopt 
this century, whatever you have left to live, and make this the century where the world turned around, looked at all the previous knowledge, and went, okay, we don't do that one anymore, we don't do that one anymore, and that's some bullshit, so we're going to stop doing that. And what I mean is, basically, I think, and this may be me in my utopian naivete, but I think that all wars are unnecessary, and I think that the world should just fucking stop it. You know, and... I know, and I'm not trying to get an awe moment from you, because you can easily say, well, World War II was really fucking necessary. Yes, but I'm thinking more preemptively. Well, Adolf Hitler had to be stopped. Adolf Hitler needed an Al Green record and a hug. <laughs> Adolf Hitler needed better parenting. Adolf Hitler needed to be surrounded by millions of Germans who would have just said, <laughs> Like my country with Bush and him, so I don't see hate for freedom. We're gonna go freedom out to rock. We're gonna, we're gonna democratize the country. We're gonna have to kill about 150, 50,000 of them a day to do it, but uh, and then we're gonna get the oil. I mean, we're gonna free them. And we're gonna have schools and, and literacy, and they're gonna teach me how to read. And we're gonna teach them how to read. And my country kind of went, okay. I mean, it happened on my watch. I mean, I would know this is bullshit like millions of other Americans, but they still did it. And so we need to take stronger actions. No, I'm not saying go into the streets, throw rocks through windows, because you just get your head cracked open.